What's up everybody, Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. This is the end of day for November 24th, 2021, the day before Thanksgiving. Guys, I am thankful for many things, and that includes you guys that watch me on the YouTube. Um, I do appreciate all the likes, subscribes, and the comments, so uh, keep that up. If you got something to say, I try to answer the comments when I can. I can't always keep up, but I try, and I do appreciate all of you guys, and I appreciate all the core and premium members. Um, guys, there's a lot of people that have flat out told me, well, I don't have time to come to the meeting, but I want to support you. I truly appreciate that. That uh, means a lot to me. So it's helping me uh, keep good information coming out for other technicians that can't afford uh, to go to big training events or uh, their shop won't pay for their training. So there's a lot of technicians that are paying their own $10 a month for the core subscription. So those of you on other platforms and stuff that are supporting me, uh, that, that makes a big difference. So thank you. I hope everybody has a fantastic Thanksgiving. Uh, today started out with a 2016 GMC Yukon. This had a uh, brand new HMI, this is a human interface control module that was installed to, to it. And the service information procedure, the SI procedure on all data on GM's website, it doesn't quite match the terminology that they use in SPS, so this was confusing for me. So I'll be the first one to tell you, we got the job done and that's great. Now, I took a long time getting there, and if you want to see me beat my head against the wall and some of the things I tried and me narrate over it, uh, core and premium members, that will be up in the next few days. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put that up for you. So um, I'll try to answer any questions I ha you may have about that, but it was an interesting process, and it just was weird. So that job's done. Next up, we had a 2016 Ford Fusion that the uh, shop was doing rear calipers on. And they retracted the pistons with a, a scan tool, and then they did the end service procedure where it's supposed to go ahead and uh, put the pistons back or put pressure on them, and it would not work. It kept on airing out. Uh, they tried to do the relearn procedure. I think they're using a snap-on tool. I got there with the Ford IDS. I tried the same thing, and I could not get the code to clear. Something was odd or something was missed. I, I don't know if possibly uh, the little uh, indentation in the piston was misaligned with a pad, so maybe the piston was just rotating instead of being stuck so it would not go in and out. I really don't know, but what I can tell you we did was we took that caliper off, uh, we held it up, we jammed the screwdriver between the pads, and I went ahead and uh, uh, pushed a button to relearn the positions, and it passed instead of failing. And then I did the retract pistons for service, and then we slapped that caliper back onto the rotor, bolted it up, and did the um, end service procedure to uh, relearn the position of the uh, 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 caliper or whatever, and it worked. So I say whatever because it's kind of funny. Really, it's looking at the current of that little motor. It's just a little motor. It spins a little uh, belt. Uh, cog belt. Very interesting how they do that, but the job was done. We got that one all set. Next up was a 2007 Chevy Tahoe, I believe it was. Yeah, I believe it was uh, Chevy Tahoe with a new TCM. This was easy, no problems there. After that, we went and did a wind module and a couple keys for a 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan. Gravy train, love it, no problems. Uh, straightforward stuff. After that, I took a look at a Jeep Compass. This was a uh, 2016 Jeep Compass. No communication with the ABS control module. And guys, if you've worked on one of these, you know there's not a lot of room uh, to get that uh, connector off. And also, I was struggling to unlatch the connector, trying to get that cover off so I could just back probe in there. So I did something I don't like to do, and I'll be the first one to tell you. I don't like to do it, but you're here, and I'll tell you what I did. I used a test light. I don't usually do that. It's not mine. I had to go ask one of the guys in the shop for one. I don't carry a test light with me. Anyhow, we tested for power there. Um, and we were missing a power. One of the leads, one of the main powers that's supposed to be hot all the time was missing. We checked the power at the uh, tipum uh, for the fuse on both sides, checked the power out of the tipum, and it was all good. So we have an open circuit. The shop is going to go ahead and investigate that. Um, I really didn't have t enough time today. I was, had a pretty busy day. And they're going to go investigate that with the hopes of maybe finding another wire. This vehicle sat for a long time. I guess it sat for six months without running. And it didn't have problems before it sat, so, and then problems started after it sat. So I'm assuming possibly either a corroded wire or maybe a rodent got up there and chewed somewhere I couldn't find uh, when I briefly looked at it. After that, we were on to a 2012 Chevy Sonic. This was a used transmission, and it failed GM programming. I had to do some uh, magic to make that thing go away. We got it taken care of. After that, uh, we went on to a 2014 GM, or I'm sorry, Chevy Suburban. 
I get my vehicles mixed up. They're all the same to me, really. 2014 Suburban, new transmission control module. This ended my day in good fashion, and uh, all is well there, no problems. Guys, I appreciate your support. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. I've been trying to get better at doing these end-of-day videos. If you're still watching, maybe you can give me some comments on it. I want to be doing a, a good job, so A, it's entertaining. This is for entertainment purposes only. Don't go trying to fix a car based on what I say, right? <laughs> um, but B, I want to give you guys good information that helps you. So if you have any comments on how I can do that better in the future, let me know. It does take a boatload of time for me to make these videos at the end of the day. My wife doesn't like it. I get home from work and I spend an hour in the basement making a video. So what are you going to do? Uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic Thanksgiving. I'm going to work on a couple videos. I'm not going to work on Friday, so I will not have a video out till Monday for the uh, end of day stuff. You guys have a great holiday. Bye-bye.